She hasn't gained, but she hasn't lost a pound. You've been following the dietary protocols. A month should have been more than enough to show those last 10 pounds to meet her goal. That tells me is that your eating habits are not where they need to be yet. You know, <laughs> I do find it quite amusing, you know, in a very pathetic way. Not in a funny way, in a very pathetic way. When somebody is on a weight loss journey, okay, that has been, that is still obese. No, not even has been obese, but still is in that category. And when it comes to their weigh-in, they have maintained what they lost the, on their previous weigh-in. I don't know how people can be happy with that, you know? That's a very sad thing. To be in that mental mind, that state of mind, where you're like, well, at least I didn't gain nothing. Damn. That's not a good thing. You know, you're only supposed to maintain your weight once you get to your healthy weight. You do not maintain a, well, a weight that is unhealthy. Make that make sense. But let's continue, though. So I can't approve you for surgery today. So you come back in two weeks, 10 pounds lighter. 10 pounds in two weeks. I've never even had the flu and lost 10 pounds in two weeks. You know when somebody responds with this type of energy? This is the energy that you don't need to have if you're really hungry to achieve your goals, okay? But hey, we continue. Now I'm gonna find the willpower to stick to this new diet. Yes. I hit my goal weight. You serious? I think this has honestly been the worst two weeks of my life. Oh my I mean, honestly, <laughs> you know, in life, they say you should always do what you can to enjoy the journey of trying to get to your goal. Because if you don't enjoy the journey of getting to your goal, well, then you probably aren't going to appreciate it when you actually get to your goal. I get it. Listen, obviously, she had hit a diet that was obviously different. She had to lose, obviously, 10 pounds in two weeks. I get it. Was, the pressure was on. But let's talk about accountability. This pressure that she had to lose this in two weeks, that pressure could have not been there if she had just lost the weight that she needed to originally because she originally had time to lose the weight that she needed to be able to get that surgery so really and truly if she wants to sit there and talk about how this has been the toughest week or horrible week or whatever in her life well she needs to now look at the situation and be like okay cool but why did i get my how did i get to this point ah that's because when i was given x amount of time to lose weight i didn't i just ended up maintaining and to be fair not only did i maintain it but i actually thought that i gained weight do you see what I'm saying? If she had never put herself in a position where she thought that she was gaining weight and she put herself in a position where she actually knew she was losing weight and she had actually lost the weight, well, then guess what? This little two-week thing, it wouldn't have happened. So she has to recognize that she's put herself in this. But hey, we continue. God, I don't know why you thought of this. I absolutely hate Megan for putting us up to this. I mean, if there was any way to mend the friendship in first the bond, does it have to be a nice... I have a question. Yeah. So for beginners, like how long do I have to stay in to see the benefit? It's really up to you how long you stay in, but we recommend like two minutes. You know, Ashley is the queen of starting things on a bad note, you know? It's, it's, it's such an Ashley thing, you know? Like before something happens, she has to also, she has to highlight the negatives first. I don't know why she just can't go into things with a positive mindset. And you know what happens? Listen, let's get into this here. Five, four, three. Two, one. So as you saw, she did make it into a minute. Obviously, two minutes is a top, but she did it for a minute. Megan did, but Megan did do the two minutes, okay? But, you see, if Ash had gone into this with a bit more headstrong, maybe she would have hit that, that, that two minutes. But she went in there being doubtful. That's why she obviously struggled and she was obviously expressing for everyone just to leave her alone and be quiet when she was doing it, you know? But my point being is what your men how you set your mental mind that determines how are you going to do in, in certain things in life, you see what I'm saying? And for her, maybe she could have hit that. But listen, the one minute was actually fantastic. I'm not taking away from one bit, but her mentality is so bad. She needs to improve in that. But nonetheless, though, let's move on to the, the Scatty boy. Scatty to... No, 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 let me not say that. <laughs> I was going to say Scatty to Hori, but I was like, yeah, no. A goal to lose 30 pounds in two months. I have not been to fast food. I've given up soda, but it's from the changes. Um, my clothes are starting to feel better and fit better, and my confidence is getting better. I mean, I want to start dating again. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Scott's goal tonight was to find a woman and not be filling his belly with little bit of quiches. I know he has a goal to meet for Dr. Proctor. I love Just because it's interesting, isn't it, how Scott, you know, would talk about how he's had a goal and he's now starting to feel better and all that kind of stuff, which is fantastic. But then this thing, you know, you see him in the next scene and this guy's by the food bar. Really enjoying it.
But should he be judged for still wanting to enjoy some food? Well, I guess it depends on if that food is a part of his uh, calorie deficit. You know what I mean? But again, though, to be honest, last I think last week we had uh, Megan looking at Scott being like, wow, you're eating like that? That can never be me when it has been her. <laughs> but then this week you've all, you've got Ashley now also looking at Scott and being like, whoa, this wasn't a part of your plan. Now, the, f the thing that I find funny is that these women are, these two women are looking at him and obviously having some form of a judgment when in reality, they need to be recognizing that Scott is exactly who they are. And, you know, and, uh, and, and, and hopefully looking at Scott can give them a, can give them motivation to want to do better. But here's the thing though, here's the spoiler. I've seen how Megan and Ashley are looking currently in real time, which I'm sure you folks have, and neither one of them have lost weight. And bear in mind, this would have been filmed a year ago, if not more. <laughs> Those two women, out there looking at Scott, having their judgments. But the reality is this, Scott did actually end up losing a lot of weight. If you haven't seen it on social platforms, check it out. So my point being is that these are the two kind of people who can look at someone, have their own judgment. But meanwhile, they don't even have their own shiz uh, together. <laughs> Typical. Because we physically lost weight. I still mentally allow men to treat me as they did when I was 500, 450 pounds. Over 400 pounds and now where I am, I still allow men to treat me different. I still let them only take me home and never commit to me. So Eat healthy. To be honest with you, I, I, I'm not going to say that... Um, the way Vanessa is with men, I'm not going to say it's purely down to the fact that she was of weight before, so therefore she needed men to come in and make her feel as if she was worth something. That would have played a part, but if you ask me, I reckon that she's got trauma around her um, that is away from her weight that's put her in that position, you know? I mean, whether that be uh, the way she was raised, maybe the, her parents wasn't really ever there to, you know, support in a certain type of way. It's just, it's all about that self-love journey, do you see what I'm saying? And I believe that is the issue that she really has. That's the root to why she feels it's okay for her to basically sleep around with random guys and allow these guys to treat her less than. You know, this is, this is a childhood root from how she was obviously, you know, treated by her family members, I would imagine. Usually, usually, usually for women, you know, and even for, even for, even for men as well, how we, rep, how, uh, the people that we attract later on in life can, or it can easily be a representation of, of our parents or, or, or just our environment that we grew up around the influence that we had in our lives. So I think the weight is one reason, but there's a whole other reason that she's unaware of, but we continue. I exercise, I go to the gym. Do you eat healthy? Fried food. The guy gets up and just walks away. He didn't say anything. That guy, total scumbag. Total scumbag. I don't know why he thought that that was cool to do that to somebody. If you don't like the conversation, you don't like the questions she's asking you, just say you don't like it and then and then and then politely say, listen, this isn't gonna work for me, I'm out. But to walk away with radio silence, yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why this guy is on his is, is, is speed dating, because clearly he has no respect for women. What woman's gonna want to be with a man like that? Come on now. What a fool, because she's asking about food. <sighs> He weighed in at 284.6. I've never seen 284 really? in my adult lifetime. What did you get some more weight off of you before we talk about uh, you getting pregnant? Like how, how much more weight? 100 pounds is great, but you're still at really high risk with regards to your pounds would be even better, but you're still at really high risk with regards to pregnancy. You know, as soon as I heard, obviously, the fact that she still needs to lose an extra under 100 pounds or an, other, or an extra 100 pounds would be more ideal, I knew her reaction was never going to be, you know, the best. Another 100 pounds would be even better. Well below 200. I just lost 100 pounds. I gotta lose 100 more pounds? That's just crazy. I feel like Dr. Proctor is putting my baby making goal on hold for one more year, making me think that my dream of having a baby may not even happen at all. Time is a factor. It's funny how she sits there and says that, oh, Dr. Proctor is, is basically making me feel like my dream isn't gonna happen at all. Listen, Ashley, you're 38 years of age. So that means you've had what? <laughs> Let's just say you've had 18 years from the moment that you was 20 to get your life together to get your weight, your weight in check. You've had two um, surgeries, your weight loss surgeries in that in that 18, 18 year time span, and you have not capitalized on neither one of them. But Dr. Proctor, she can't sit there and say, Dr. Proctor's taking away her dreams or always crushing them or whatever the hell she's saying. Because the only person that has done that 
is you. It is only, only, only her. <laughs> but of course, she's not going to take that accountability. Of course, she's going to express that she feels like Dr. Proctor is, ex is, is making things harder for her. When the reality is that the only person that's made things hard for her has been her. That's it. <laughs> if only the woman took her weight loss journey seriously, maybe she would have found a man, found a man by now. And maybe she'd have had, had that had that marriage and had those kids that she wanted. But no, instead of you know finding that man and having those kids and having the marriage, she has prioritized being over. Uh, well, she's prioritized being um, obese. And then also when she's had a man, she's, she's been insecure about her own about her own appearances. So therefore, she's put those men away and put those men men off. Take accountability. You are where you are because of you. That's it. No one else. But hey, thank you for your time. Let me know what you're thinking and we can talk about it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, peace.